Welcome to Career Week, everyone. My name is Philip Lupov. I'm the Alumni Career Program Manager here at the University of um, Maryland Alumni Association. And uh, our team is responsible for organizing this Career Week and many other events throughout the year for Turks to advance their careers, elevate their expertise, and network with other alumni and students. We are uh, in our last day of the career week. We had uh, more than 20 events all over the country, in person and online. And I hope you were able to join us for some of those. But even if you are not, you'll be receiving the link to the recordings that we've made throughout the week. So look out for your very own thank you email next week. Today we'll be talking about the exclusive UMD alumni platform that many Terps already use to connect with fellow alumni and job search and uh, professional advice and to create uh, professional connections. It's called Terpins Connect. The website is uh, terpinsconnect.umd.edu. Whether you have an account already or just want to see why register, our speakers here today will uncover the power of Therapins Connect. I'm joined here by Ellie Gerati, who is the Director of Alumni Career Programs at the Alumni Association. Ellie knows everything about the history of Therapins Connect at the university. And if you ever reached out to us about career help, chances are you received the reply from Ellie. Thank you for joining us, Ellie. I have uh, Matthew Bouchard. Matthew is the senior manager at Deloitte in Georgia and the BSAS alum majored in government and politics, class of 2011. And uh, Eric Laser, who is the senior account executive at Allied Global Marketing in DC, graduated from the College of Arts and Humanities in 2011 as well, majored in communications. And we'll, uh, of course, we'll learn much more about our panelists when we get to the questions. If you have any questions, please feel free to use the chat box at the bottom of the Zoom panel. Well, now I'd like to give the floor to Ellie. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Bill. Okay, thanks. I'm um, nice and big on the screen now. Hello, everyone. I'm so happy to be here today. Um, and I'm really excited that we have two amazing alums here, Matthew and Eric, to share their experience. I could talk all day about Terrapins Connect, but it'll be great to hear from some of your fellow alums about the platform and how they use it. So I'm just going to jump right into my presentation. Someone just throw in the chat that they can see my screen. I know it's 2024 and we're sick of hearing people say, can you see my screen? But just let me know so I can move forward. Oh, great. I'm getting lots of chats. Thanks, everyone. Okay. So um, Terrapins Connect, this platform I'm really excited about um, and is a really great tool for you. So kudos to you for joining this session because um, I hope you get a lot out of it and find a new way to connect with your Terps to help your career. So I'm going to jump right in. Um, just a quick caveat. We have three full-time staff members at the Alumni Association that are dedicated to helping you on your career journey. Um, and of course, I've made this fabulous um, pointer to our friend, Phil, who just did that wonderful intro. So he's the newest member of our team, and he is going to be our full-time staff member that's dedicated to all of our programs that relate to networking and mentorship and um, job readiness and skills building, all that great stuff and he will be your main point of contact for Terrapins Connect. But he's so new, I could not have him lead this whole presentation as he's still learning just as we all are. Um, so I'm here today to really share a little bit more about the platform. Just a quick plug, my colleague Kara, um, she leads all our programming in industry and corporate alumni engagement. And then I focus a little bit more on some of our signature events and um, all of our lifelong learning for alums. So Moving ahead, you guys are already in the chat, which I love to see. This will be pretty interactive. Um, so let's get chatty. So 
We're going to be talking about Terrapins Connect, and I want to know a little bit more about your comfort level with the platform or, you know, how much of an expert you are. So just drop into the chat either A, B, C, or D. What's your experience level with the Terrapins Connect platform? Let's see. Okay, I'm getting some a lot of Cs. Great. Okay, Chris, you've used it, but very little. And if you're, if you are answering D, feel free to just let us know why. Signed up last month, not using it much yet. Thanks, Adam. Good to know. Okay, I'm not seeing any A's, so no one wants to take over this session for me. That's okay. All right, many C's and D's, which is awesome. You have come to the right place. Feel free to keep jumping in the chat um, as you see the question come up, but I'm going to jump right in. So today, you'll really be getting a guided tour of our online networking and mentorship platform. And then bonus, you're going to hear from two experts, two alumni experts, like I said, who are already on the platform, um, who can really share how they use it best. Um, and again, let's keep it moving in the chat. So <clears throat> Terrapins Connect, like I said, is, is a Terps only LinkedIn. But the benefit to Terrapins Connect is that everyone who's on the platform has virtually raised their hand and said, I want to connect with my fellow Terps specifically. So I'm sure all of you have LinkedIn platforms, right? Um, we all have different motivations for joining LinkedIn, right? Maybe it's self-promotion. Maybe you're looking for a job. But when you're joining Terrapins Connect, you have said, I am ready to connect with fellow Terps. Of course, that can mean a various or variety of different things, but you're committing to connect with your fellow Terps. And that's what makes Terpins Connect different. So as I'm saying, all this, I'm seeing some answers in the chat. People are taking some guesses on how many Terps you think are on the Terpins Connect platform. I have seen the right answer so far. And if you're ready, drum roll, please. We currently have over 19,000 Terps on the platform, which is huge. Someone give me a virtual round of applause because that is an amazing amount of alumni and students who are waiting to connect. So I'll keep it moving. Um, I'm breaking this down for you just so you can see a little bit more. This is what the platform looks like on the back end. Thank you, James, for my round of applause. I'll take it. <laughs> um, so if you look, focus your attention right here, this is the breakdown of who's on the platform, right? So it's not just over 19,000 alumni. It's um, students and faculty and staff and friends of our community. So, um, But the alums, so thank you to alums who are on the platform. You all are leading the charge with being on this platform. So you are over 12K, almost 13K of our users on the platform. Platform. Um, and then you'll see up in this right hand corner, I just pulled some recent stats in the past three months, how many messages have been sent um, to different users on the platform to show how how many people have been on the platform. And in January alone, we've had over 1600 messages sent from user to user, which is awesome. So people are using the platform, they're getting on the platform, and they're really trying to connect with each other. And then just a fabulous quote from our friend Alan, who graduated in 87. It was very nice meeting. I'm thankful that Victor reached out. Surprising how much we have in common. It should lead to more discussions, introductions, and networking. Terrapins Connect is a great way to meet and network. Okay, and I see William in the chat says we should update this number because he just joined. Thank you so much. Um, so just a quick overview before I jump into the platform. So I know I may have some, I think through Phil's poll, we saw there were some students on this call, which is wonderful. Thanks for joining us. And there obviously are some alums. So um, the platform, as you saw, is for both students and alumni. So just some fast facts about how you can use the platform based on who you are. So for students, this is a go-to space to connect with alumni. Um, this is where they students can go in and ask an alum in their industry how they can get a job in their industry or what they can do with their major or maybe get some advice on what it's like to be a student at UMD. I know Eric and Matthew will speak to that a little bit later because they have a lot of experience in that area. Um, this is a great place for students to explore potential career paths, join groups, affinity or interest groups to meet fellow students or alumni um, in areas of common interest, and then get connected to alumni association resources. And then for alumni, this is a great place if you are interested in giving back as a mentor or someone who wants to connect with students or maybe less experienced alumni, this is a great place to join. Um, 
alums, this is another great place to find jobs and post jobs for your fellow Terps. I saw a lot of people were looking potentially for um, maybe a job switch or career change, and this is a great place to do so. Again, connect with some of our alumni association resources and network with fellow alums in your area or industry. So it's time to jump into the platform. So feel free to whip out your phone or if you have a secondary screen, um, just put, I think I put in the chat and I can put it in right now, terrapinsconnect.umd.edu. You can hop onto um, the platform or use this QR code. Now I will say the platform does have an app. I don't know, Matt or, uh, or Matthew or Eric, do you guys have the app? I do. You do. Okay. So Eric's on the app. Matthew, I don't, but I'm not as tech savvy as Eric. And that is fair. The app is not for everyone, but we do have the app. So um, if you are on your phone and you're in whatever your internet browser is, um, there will be a prompt that says, uh, if you'd like to continue in the app, feel free to do so. So that's easier for some folks, not easy for all. So I have a question for you. If you, I just went on it, but you have to sign in, and I'm just joining now. Yes. So is there? Forgot. It doesn't show new. It just has director ID. It doesn't show where the new. I'll figure it out. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't see your name. And you're saying if you you're creating a profile for the first time right now, correct? I thought I had one, but apparently I don't. Okay. If you, and I should have given a caveat, if you um, do not have a profile or you're creating one um, right now, there is an, authentic uh, an auth authentication process, excuse me, on the back end for our team, just to ensure you are who you say you are. So um, I'm going to be sharing my screen so you all can see um, what the platform looks like. So you may not be able to look side on side. And I believe was that Sherry that spoke up? Um, it is. I, I thought I was a member, but apparently I'm not. At least I can't figure it out. Okay. I'll have Phil on the back end uh, look things up for you while I'm going through this. And and he can um, private message you um, to let you know Sorry. if you see your profile. Sorry to interrupt. Sorry to interrupt. That's okay. No problem. This is a, this is a um, working meeting together. Okay. So let me... I'm switching screens and the first thing I'm going to do is just sign out so you all, some of our new users can see how this platform works. Um, this is the homepage, terpensconnect.umd.edu. Um, and we will be clicking sign in. So there's a couple options here. You can continue with LinkedIn. Matthew or Eric, did you did you both um, uh, link your LinkedIn accounts when you first signed on, or did you do that manually? I see Matthew nodding. I used LinkedIn. Saves the time oh. of pulling over a lot of your info. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a lot easier. Um, so you don't have to retype anything, but thankfully we have the ability to um sync all your data with LinkedIn. And I'll show you actually on the platform, you can resync it and update it as you make changes um on your LinkedIn. So ignore me. I'm using kind of our UMD. If you remember single sign on from when you were a student or duo mobile for some of our recent grads. Um, otherwise you can just put your email address um, and your password in. So I am on my home screen. Let's make sure I have super powers here. So let's just make sure I have the right profile on. <laughs> so if you are an alum, um, this is what your home screen will look like. What's really exciting about the platform is the more information it gives you, the more it will tailor your homepage. So um, for example, if I say that I'm in the cybersecurity space, a lot of the things that are going to be coming up here um, are going to connect me to potential career stories in cybersecurity. It'll connect me to um people who are in the cybersecurity space right now. Hopefully I see some of the faces of people on this call. That would be fun. Um, but your homepage really, if you are not sure where to start, start at your homepage and um, maybe fill out a couple of these prompts. Um, the first key is really figuring out what you're on the platform to do. And obviously over time, this can change for you. So maybe Eric joined the platform to begin with to um, give back and share his experience with fellow students. I know that's why he's on the platform right now, but you know, maybe in five years, he'll actually be looking for a new job or he'll be looking to hire Terps or something like that. Hopefully not, Eric, I know you like your job. Um, but uh, 
you can update this information based on why you're on the platform. So keep that in mind because it will tailor the information that you're seeing based on what you're there to do. Um, and so I'm going to just skip some of this because there's a lot to cover on the platform. But the first thing I want to share with you, just a couple, um, a couple key insights. So a lot of feedback we get from people on the platform is that they, a lot of people reach out to them and they might not have time. You know, you're busy professionals and you, you might not be able to connect with 10 students or 10 alumni in a month, but you, you know, you're interested in really connecting with one or two. So um, if you go to your preferences, this is where you'll, you'll be able to really cater and tailor your Terrapins Connect experience. So um, you can enter things like your phone number. I'm pretty sure Eric has his phone number linked. You can correct me if I'm wrong, Eric, but I think if you put your phone number, all these messages, and if you have something in your inbox or you have an update from the platform, that'll get sent to your phone. Go ahead, Eric. Yeah, yeah, I do have it connected. Yeah, so if a student or an alum messages him on the platform, he can receive that message to his phone and respond on his phone. So again, and that's correct, Eric, right? That's what you've done before? Yes. Yeah. So again, this is for people who are interested in that. Um, you can see I haven't put my phone number in because I prefer email. Um, so you can set all your notification preferences and where you're like if someone's requesting a meeting with you, you can get that either to your phone or to your email. Um, and this is all for you to play around with. So make sure you spend some time in your preferences. Um, what I was mentioning earlier is setting your availability. So you can set a maximum number of people who can reach out to you um, and you can set your calendar. So you can say, I am available mainly on Mondays around this time to that time or, um, you know, whatever it may be. I always say, you know, if Kevin Plank, fingers crossed, would one day create a profile on Terrapins Connect, I'm sure he would be all over this calendar and probably only be able to, you know, um, have one person a year. So you can use this area for that. And then a quick plug for the matching quiz. Like I said, the more you share with the platform, the more it will be tailored to you. Um, so just sharing information about where you're in, you're interested in meeting others and then what your industries you're um, most interested in. So it's a little bit about where your preferences are, but I'm going to hop into um, your profile. So <clears throat> the, it's not extremely different from LinkedIn. Um, so you'll have your profile information and all of your info will be uh, imported from LinkedIn if you do choose to do so. And this button right here, uh, this blue button says refresh LinkedIn data. So if you have a new job update or you have other information on your LinkedIn you want shared here, you can always press refresh. Um, it won't auto update for you. So just keep that in mind. Um, any information you're willing to share is here. Um, things about your career story, what your current job title is. And there's a lot of prompts for you to answer um, that can be helpful to other students or um, alumni that are interested in your field. So play around with your home, with your profile page and you it'll prompt you how well you're doing. I'm only three sevenths of the way there. So um, I have a lot more to add, but where I'm gonna spend most of my time is really in the place um, where you're you're probably most interested in being, which is meeting other Terps and finding Terps on the platform that are most interesting to you. So that is through this connect um, pillar up here and through community. So this is where you can meet people that are potentially within your industry or areas of interest. Um, so what will immediately happen when you enter this area? People will be filtered because of um, any information that you've shared with them. Um, of course, it says people who are currently online or have recently been online. James, I feel like I saw your name in the chat. Maybe you're with us or maybe I just remember your name. But um, James has recently been on the platform. Um, so we'll see that information here. So you can just take a peek and you'll see if there's a heart here. That means there's something that you have in common with um, this person. So it's a great indicator that they might be a good person to start connecting with. Um, and then you'll see based on um, anything you've put in, I've I've put in that I have experience in other education, um, 
and I have experience and I'm in a group for women in STEM. So these are some of the folks who are coming up for me just based on that information. People who majored in psychology, which is my major, again, um, all things that are on my profile. So say I wanted to meet with, or I was interested in talking to someone who majored in psychology, um, I can pull up Julia's profile. It looks like we already have one thing in common. I can pull up her profile. I can see, oh, she's a graduate of class 2017. She currently lives in New Zealand. That's amazing. Um, here's what she's here to help with. Resumes and cover letters, grad school, making the most out of college. And I can see um, she's a current PhD student and teaching assistant. So there's a lot of information I can find about her. So if I want to connect with her, I just click this button and message Julie. So um, what's great about the platform, and this is especially for our students that are on the call right now, sometimes it's nerve wracking to figure out what you want to say to someone when you're starting one of these introduction conversations. But luckily, the platform has built in three different templates for you to choose from and tailor. So don't just click this and keep it as is and send. You got to add a little more information that, you know, tailors the content. It's like chat GPT. You can't just copy and paste it. You got to make it your own a little. So um, you're welcome to use one of these three templates. Um, and the platform you'll see will pull in information about Julie. So, um, you know, it pulls in, hi, Julie. Tell me about this as your current role as a PhD student and teaching assistant. Um, how do you apply X, Y, and Z? So again, if I like how it sounds, you can do whatever you want. You can attach a file if you want to attach your resume. You can also link to anything. If you have, you know, a website or CV that's on a web page, you can link to that. Um, it's pretty editable. Once everything's good, I feel good about it. Um, I can send this to her or I can send, I can schedule sends like you can on Gmail. So just keep that in mind. Um, and I'm not going to send this to Julie right now, but uh, I just wanted to show you how easy it was to message someone on the platform. So let me head back to the connect area. I want to show you the types of things that you can filter by. And if you are able to do this on your own right now, um, start thinking of maybe an industry or a topic area that, that you are most interested in and see if you can filter by it and who comes up for you. So we can filter by um, any industry that you're interested in. So I can pretty much click anything and an alum will come up in that area. Um, exact matches, there's 98 people that are in this current industry of government and intelligence. Um, sometimes I search by topic. So again, this is good for both students and alumni, but maybe students um, or recent grads who are thinking about grad school. Um, people have indicated on their profile they are willing to talk to you about grad school or preparing for interviews or maybe re-entering the workforce. You took some time off for an, you know, any reason and you're interested in re-entering the workforce. People aren't just here um, for their own benefit. They're also here to benefit you as the fellow TERP. So you can filter by some of these um, topics. And Another exciting thing you can do, I mean, you can filter by major, which I know is really important to people. You can also filter by company and organization for all of our job seekers out there. This is a really, really great tool for you. So say um, you're really interested in working at Amazon. Uh, let's see. You can also click is current, which means they currently work at Amazon. The platform is going to pull anyone who has Amazon on their um on their profile. So this might have been past experience, but um, you can also click is current if you want someone that currently works there. So let's see if we have anybody that works at Amazon. Oh, I see. I see what I've done here. I got to clear my government intelligence. And then we have all of these people who have experience working at Amazon. So I can scroll through. And I can see, oh, Chen Ren might be a good person to talk to. It also says that he responds within a day. It seems like he's really active on the platform. I can message with him immediately. So I'll give those who are on the platform, I'll give you a second um, to try this on your own and see if there are folks that um, you're able to connect with 
that um, that would be most beneficial to you. So I'll give you a second to do that and I'll check the chat to see if there are any questions. Oh, and I missed a lot. I'm so sorry, Elizabeth. Will we always have access to our SSO even after graduation? You will not. That is something that will go away um, once you graduate. Um, and Shane said, will you be adding more industries to Terrapins Connect? Yes, this isn't on. Oh, and Phil's already answered. We can totally add. Yes, this is an ongoing struggle. There are so many different industries out there. So I know there can be frustration around, you know, finding the industry that best represents you, but always, always good feedback for us. Um, let's see. Oh, James is here. Just like I thought. Thanks for joining. Um, do, do, do. It looks like Phil's, Phil's on it. Phil is on it. Okay. Any specific questions about how you can filter users and find the right people to talk to? Otherwise, I'm going to move on to the job board and then make sure Matthew and Eric can um, get involved. Okay. I'm not hearing anything or I'm not seeing anything. Okay. Great. So the next, again, this platform is has so much to it, but I, I think these are the two most beneficial things um, for some of our new users and some of our users that will be, you know, on the platform many times. So the career section is where you can find job information. So this is for people who are looking for jobs or looking to hire Terps. Um, what's most beneficial for the um I guess why this job board is different than any other job board is because of the personal connection that you have to the people who have posted the job. Um, so any job that you see here um, will also have, you know, who the person is that's hiring for the job and if they can potentially help you in the application process. So uh, I'm just seeing this position right here. Holly um, is the one hiring and she's willing to help. And Holly is someone who has a Terrapins Connect platform. So you can click on Holly's profile. You can see what her position is. Um, and you can ask her a question. So you could directly reach out to her and say, hey, you know, as a fellow Terp, I'm interested in this position. Can you tell me a little more about it? I'd love to connect with you over coffee. So again, it's just another layer um, that, that really helps you in the job search. As we all know, the job search process is, I think it's at this point, over 70% networking. Um, and this is the place to do it with your fellow Terps who want to help each other. So I'll just scroll through. Scroll excuse me, scroll through. Um, there's a couple of people who are willing to act as a referral. Um, and then for something like this, there are people that will come up that have experience in either that role or at that company. So they might not be the ones hiring for that position, but they might have worked there or have had that job title before. So again, it's always good to reach out to someone that's either working at that company or has worked at that company previously just to get your foot in the door. Um, so you'll see same as when you're in the community space, you can filter by companies, you can filter by location or industry um, and experience level. So I encourage you to do that and, and find a job. And more importantly than find the job is find the person to connect to on the platform that will help you learn more about the job and potentially land the job. So um, again, this will be something that you'll want to explore in your own time, but a really helpful part of the platform is um, this immediate connection that you can have with Terps here. So I have moved through things pretty quickly, but I wanna make sure we leave time for Matthew and Eric to chat with us. Does anyone have immediate questions that I might be able to answer before I hand it over to our fellow alums? I'm getting a thumbs up, fabulous. I'll give it a minute. I know it takes a minute for people to type, so I'll give you a second. Okay, I see. We have one Oops. question from Lauren. Yes, I see. Once you've created... Um, 
Do you have access to your emails after graduating? Tanya, you do for a time being, um, but if you create a profile while you're a student, um, once you graduate, you will be prompted to update your information. So you'll have the opportunity to change your email address then. Um, Cause I do believe other alums can chime in here, but I don't believe that you can keep your um, student email address forever. The other question was if uh, someone creates a profile without LinkedIn, without. can they update after uh, the fact and yes, you can create a profile however you like, and then you can update it with LinkedIn. And the system will tell you how to update that. Yes. And I just saw that um, Jennifer says you can keep your Terp Mail email for account forever. So you heard it here first with Jennifer. I can still go onto, onto my Terp Mail. That's amazing. Um, there were some questions about SSO. I apologize for um, confusing people. That's just a system that our um, university uses as like a secondary auth authentication um, thing. So apologies for confusing people. And uh, to answer one other question, uh, it says, I own a company. How can I contribute? And I wanted to say you totally can register for Terpins Connect and contribute as a uh, like everybody else by networking with fellow Terps and current students. You can also go to alumni.umg.edu and register for the alumni business directory. And that's uh, a little bit different story, but uh, at alumni.umg.edu, you have lots of resources for job seekers, career changers, and uh, for uh, any alumni to reconnect with fellow alumni and advance their career and advance their business as well. And I'll drop that link in the chat for you once I um once I pass oh, it over. All right. Um, okay, let me um, thank you, Ali. This is very informative. And um, I want to make sure we have uh, some time for our um, alumni friends to share their experience here. I think it's very important to see testimonials from people who really do use this platform, not just uh, Ellie and myself. We use it every day too. Um, and uh, so um, Matthew and Derek, I, you are guys, somebody who I would call uh, power users at, of the platform. You have uh, uh, build your connections actively, you reply messages, uh, you utilize all features, and maybe even some features that we didn't know um, were of interest. And I'll um, ask you about that. But before that, if you would like to introduce yourself and just briefly uh, share your career path after college. Um, who want to wanna go uh, first? Sure, I can, I can go ahead. Oh, oh, you can go first, Matthew. Thanks. Uh, hey everyone, Matthew Bouchard, uh, graduated from Maryland 2011 uh, in government and politics, criminology, criminal justice, and a minor in terrorism studies. Um, currently now I'm a senior manager at Deloitte Consulting in their government and public services practice where I specialize in their defense security and justice sector. Uh, long story short, my career path out of school, I wanted to be Jack Bauer, James Bond doing cool secret spooky stuff for the government. Never got the opportunity to truly break into uh, that side, um, but kind of grew up doing government contracting, eventually moving my way over to a big four professional services firm in Deloitte and have grown up as a consultant manager, now senior manager there. All right. Uh, so I also graduated in 2011. I was a communication major on the public relations sure. track. So I had first interned for a company called Metromix. We're a local entertainment website. We covered events all over the DC area. I kind of knew I wanted to be in entertainment, but I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do, which path I wanted to be in. Um, so actually my internship coordinator is Julie Gowan, who's on this call today. So she was uh, my internship coordinator when I was a student. Now I work with her. I'm the internship coordinator at my job. So I work with her on a professional level and we've been working for a number of years. Um, so after I interned with Metromix, I got a full-time job. It was going well to December of the year I graduated. Our parent company shut us down. So I was one of 550 people who got laid off. 
I kind of bounced around doing a couple other things, but again, through networking, I'd worked with my current company, Ally Global Marketing. We did some events with them. Um, so then I reached out to them. I started interning with them because that's basically how I could get my foot in the door. Then a couple months later, a full-time job opened up. So what we do, we are the largest movie PR marketing firm in the country. So we have about 25 offices all over the world. I'm in the DC office. Our office covers DC, Baltimore, Norfolk, and Richmond. So the majority of our clients who predominantly are movie studios, they hire us to represent them in our markets. Um, so, and I've been here in May, it'll be 10 years since I've been here. I've been at Allied. So oh, fantastic. And well, let's go to the Therpins Connect. And if you can share how you were first introduced to the platform and uh, how you would describe it in a few worlds for people who want to join. So I don't remember exactly when I, I first was introduced. I remember, you know, announcements that it was coming out. This was a, a new thing. And the idea was kind of how Ellie described it, a more personalized, curated version of LinkedIn with people whom you share something with by definition or common interest. Um, and it really resonated to me because uh, I learned about the power of networking the hard way by being fun employed for a year and a half after graduating uh, and trying to find my first opportunity and, and going about it the entirely wrong way. And after, you know, learning those lessons and looking back, I wish that there was something like this around when I was graduating uh, and wanted to contribute to it for people who had any sorts of questions. Were they uh, current students looking to figure out what was the best way to make their career path happen that they're most interested in or alumni who were just interested in connecting in a little bit more of a personalized, authentic way than the, you know, vast inundation of LinkedIn requests that people get all the time. Yeah. So um, as I mentioned, I'm the internship coordinator at my job. So um, I continue to do things on campus. Uh, I was actually, one of the events is a great, it's a speed mentoring event that I do uh, pretty much annually uh, through the communication to, uh, through Oxford Humanities where uh, I kind of mentor students. Uh, Julie Gallon's the one who's in charge of that. So uh, it's usually around like early March every year. So of course, in 2020, we had the pandemic. So we were going to be doing the event. It was canceled. And then she said, hey, if uh, you can't do it, you might want to sign up for Terrapins Connect. So I signed up from there. Um, and I love speaking to students and anyone who else, anyone else is interested, just because I know when I was a student, a lot of people were interested in the entertainment industry and there really weren't people there. So I kind of can tell people what it's like. Kelly, you kind of, my honest opinion, it's not all, uh, it's not all like uh, glamorous as it seems, but um, it is a very interesting industry that I love working in. Um, and I've spoken to a number of students there. I've mentored them. Some of them have hired as interns. If I have internship openings or job openings, I'll also post on Terrapins Connect. And basically Terrapins Connect, kind of what Matthew said, like LinkedIn, a lot of people are on there for different reasons. Terrapins Connect, we're basically there to connect. We're basically there to help. Um, and it's especially in the University of Maryland community. So it's uh, more of like a targeted version of LinkedIn, basically. Um, and uh, I've also met some other alums as well uh, who I've connected with. So I think it's a really great platform. All right. Thank you. This is great. Who do you think this platform is? Um, who wants to use it mostly? I, I, I mean, for me, I get a lot of requests from current students who are, you know, juniors or seniors and kind of in a similar position in looking at my profile that I, I might have been in at their mm -hmm. uh, point in time and just looking for advice or feedback about what they're doing or, or what they're not doing and maybe they're not aware of but should be to get to where they want to go from a career standpoint. Um, so I get a ton of students um, who are looking for uh, advice about how to differentiate themselves in landing interviews, what to say in interviews in order to, you know, highlight the impact of their experience and their skill set versus just, you know, running through their resume like everybody else does. Um, thinking about how to break into complex or complicated industries. And you know, one of the the hard things right now for students when they graduate is that most entry level jobs don't have entry level requirements. So how do you like land that first thing and how does that career path look like? Cause it's not always very linear. In fact, almost all the time it isn't. So what are those kind of roundabout ways to get access to people or organizations or opportunities that might not be immediately obvious to them? Um, so 
for current students reaching out for sure. But uh, I think the alumni uh, to alumni connection piece of it is also crucially important too. I mean, you have access to an awesome uh, library of people whom, you know, if you're having a business uh, challenge and you're thinking, you know, man, I know, I wish I had someone who I could call up about an emerging AI issue that I'm talking about. You do that on LinkedIn, you'll, you know, filter till you're blue in the face, finding everybody who says they're an AI expert. You want to zoom down a little bit to someone who you might be able to uh, connect with directly whom you have something in common with, or is, you know, a connection of a connection. It's a much smaller, I think, and more personalized world. Um, and in a world where, you know, speed and trust are, are paramount and getting things done in business that that matters a lot and making that direct connection can be huge and, uh, making that impact versus a more wide open place like a LinkedIn. Yeah, I completely agree with everything Matthew said. Uh, a lot of the people that I speak with are more juniors and seniors, I would say some of them want career advice, some of them, I just kind of give them like general life advice, like kind of getting through your last year or two of college, what to do, trying to figure out what's best for their careers. Um, I've also spoken with some alums who kind of want to switch career paths and want to find out more. Um, so yeah, it's really just about uh, connecting with uh, the community and trying to help uh, and uh, giving them more insight into my industry. Oh, thank you. You know, I have a little bit different question just to um, set up uh, you know, people's expectations. And uh, you have lots of uh, messages between uh, alumni and the students and all that. What do you think people would not receive uh, on Terpins Connect, what they expect it to be? Well, I guess one obvious question is that we all need to invest more, more efforts of our own in getting something, of course, um, although there is all this artificial intelligence thing and uh, machine learning on, behind the platform. But um, what are what are correct expectations for people who use this platform? What do you think? I, I think for me, having a specific ask or inquiry is the most efficient way to establishing credibility and, you know, genuine interest. I think I honestly get, you know, turned off a little bit when someone reaches out saying, I just like to connect with you and learn. And I'm like, well, I'm happy to help. That's why I'm here. But, you know, just ask specifically what you need. If it's, if it's advice about how to, you know, get your application seen um, by a company versus just, you know, post it, applying to a posted job and hoping for the best. I'm, I'm happy to talk about that, but that's a different, more uh, specific conversation than just a, uh, let's connect and, you know, be friends and talk about, you know, whatever. Um, I think the power of the platform is you have all these dimensions. You can understand people's skill set, expertise, experience in lots of different industries, companies, academia, nonprofits, government. Um, you kind of get a pretty good idea of their stories and being able to slice and dice in all those different ways. And whatever that dimension is about that person that's explicitly interesting, ask about that. If you're, if you're wanting them to open a door for you that you haven't been able to open, ask. They might not be able to, but at least you're, you're, you're taking that chance and you're asking up front and not, you know, beating around the bush, waiting months, you know, trying to just be friendly and just hoping for the best. So I'd say come into it with an intention and a specific expectation of what you're hoping to achieve. Um, and when you ask for help, people are generally willing to try and make it happen, whatever power they have to, to make it happen. Yeah, it's sort of adding on to that, like the ones that kind of impressed me the most, it's kind of similar when I do intern interviews, it's people who've done their research, they show an enthusiasm, they kind of um, like show that they want to get ahead. Um, my industry, unfortunately, is sort of a little bit of a doggy dog type industry and people do get eaten up alive a little bit. And so it's the people that kind of really have that drive, that have that interest. Those are the ones that really stand out. So, um, yeah. Well, and hey, the Phil. Yeah. Can I jump in um, just sure. to reiterate what these two have said? I just want to show you on the platform how um, easy it is to do what these two gentlemen are right. saying. So 
Um, and sorry, now, now you're going to see all my tabs opened, no judgment here. But um, if I'm just on my home screen here, like I mentioned, um, if there's people I want to talk to, I mentioned this before, looking at what these three things are that I have in common with some of these connections. And then again, if I'm going to message with someone, um, Terrapins Connect brings up their bio and it brings up their current and past experience. So you have all the information you need to drop in those key points and not, you know, like Matthew was saying, not just keep it vague, but say, you know, I see that you have a lot of experience at this grassroots crisis intervention center. I want to work there. How can I, how can I work there? So um, Turbans Connect does give you the information that you need to, you know, make those conversations tailored to the individual. So I'll let you get back to it. All right. Well, um, thank you. And be, I, I think we will have a few questions in chat as well for our speakers. But uh, before that, uh, if you um, gentlemen can give us, a, I want to dive a little bit into your industries because what you're doing is interesting and attractive to many alumni. So um, is there any advice based on your professional experience and based on your industry, what is the importance of mentorship and networking in where you work? Eric, you want to start? Yeah, I can start. Uh, for my industry, networking is huge. That's kind of how most people get places. That's how a lot of people get jobs. If I talk to people, like again, if I don't even have, if I don't have something open at my position, I have friends and other similar businesses who might also. So, uh, on, in all honesty, I've never gotten a job just through a blind job application. It's all been through networking. It's all about your connections. It's about keeping up with your connections. Um, and obviously, you can, it's basically, it's up to you. So basically, like my advice would be once you make a connection, keep that connection because um, you never know how they're going to help you in the future. Yeah. I mean, I would, I would echo that and say, I mean, in almost every business or industry, you know, growth success is fueled by relationships, um, both upwards with your leadership, across with your peers, downwards versus, you know, the people who report to you, um, you know, even competitors, right? Like understanding what they're doing and, you know, the enemy of an enemy might be your friend someday when it comes to, uh, to work that you're doing. Um, for us specifically at Deloitte and professional services, it's a highly relational industry. I mean, clients buy services from, from people, I mean, assets as well, but at its core, it's a interpersonal uh, industry where you might not always have the best price or best solution or smartest people on the ground, but if there's a element of trust and authenticity and, you know, genuine connection back and forth that, you know, develops over many, many years and oftentimes and is not always going to be on all the time. But like Eric's saying, you maintain that relationship going forward. You never know what that's going to lead to one day. And so um, investing in those authentically, not just, again, upwards, but um, downwards, too. I mean, I people who have reported to me, you know, have gone on and become much more successful going to Meta and Amazon and um, Visa all over the place. And they're always going to be a part of my network. So continuing to stay in touch with the people who follow you along your career, as well as the people that you're following. One other thing I do want to add, um, I would say do not burn any bridges. Uh, at least in my industry, I can say, for lack of a better term, it's a little bit of an incestuous industry. I see so many people that move from one movie studio to another or one job or one agency to another. And it's you're always going to see these people over again. I see it even like with local radio, local TV, people go all over the place. So don't burn any bridges because you're probably going to end up seeing that you might end up seeing them again. Well, this is this is all fantastic. You know what? And I like how this conversation about such a, a specific software we use, Therapids Connect, gets into the good advising session about, in general, what is important for networking. And I hope we can um, arrange uh, uh, some event dedicated to that and have you as speakers in this um, calendar year. This would be fantastic. I would like... Uh, I would like to give our um, audience to um, put in uh, questions in chat um, if anyone has anything. And um, 
we have probably around 10 minutes left or so. Um, but let me maybe ask you this. This is a very specific question because we are on, in this digital age and all that. And it, it is very relevant to the software we use. Um, what are some advice you can uh, give around electronic correspondence and what people should include in their emails, what they should not, um, what's the difference between sending an email to you, maybe addressation or something, you know, versus to our friends, um, how it's how it's been done in practice, what you see. I would say one of the biggest things with emails, especially, is to make sure you uh, proofread, make sure you're sending the right thing, sending the right attachment. I had one student, I forget where they were, but um, they, I interviewed with them. I turned them down for an internship. They applied for an internship the following semester, and they sent me a resume for, I think it was Warner Brothers Records. So I just simply replied. I was like, sorry, we're not Warner Brothers Records, because that shows that they really didn't care. They really um didn't take time to proofread their emails. Uh, I would also say that the best thing with emails is to make them short and sweet, get to the point. Uh, if you send like an essay long email, no one's going to, a lot of people aren't going to want to take the time to do that. In my industry, we do a lot of pitching. We pitch out press, we pitch partners to work with. And if you send like an essay long email, they're not going to want to read it. So I guess I'll just say like, in terms of what we do, if we send something out, we'll just be like, Hey, like if we have an interview opportunity, we have an interview opportunity with so-and-so, please let me know if you're interested. And then below that additional information uh, on the title or a bio or something like that. Um, so yeah, that's probably what I would say are some of the best things. No, I agree. I would say, I mean, for us at Deloitte, the joke is the higher up you go, eventually, by the time you're a partner, you don't even send emails. You just send subject line of an email and expect people to, to act off of that. When you start as a, as an analyst out of school, you're sending a, a book report. Um, but assume that the person on the receiving end has no more than 30 seconds to really digest what you're trying to send along, not because they don't care, but because they're getting hammered with hundreds of other things a day. So make your point quickly um, to advance the conversation. I mean, the nature of this portal is to set up a meeting, to, uh, to, to take an action, depending on what you're hoping to get out of the nature of the relationship, make that known, make it quick. Um, follow up too. I mean, sometimes stuff just gets missed. Um, and then especially too, when, you know, I reply, Eric replies, whomever replies saying, yeah, happy to talk. Can you set up a time? Um, and, and, and if we give any times of availability, just, just schedule it. Don't say, does this work? Does that work? Does that work? Just put it on the calendar. If it doesn't work, we'll, we'll let you know. Um, but just being as efficient as possible through the correspondence, because the point of email isn't to get to know each other better. Point of email is to be able to send information, ask something, or set up a time to get to know each other better. Great. All right. Well, um, one one advice I would give to anyone who would like to ask any questions of Matthew and Eric, you can always find uh, them on Terpins Connect and um, and uh, you know, create your profile and uh, find people. And if you need any help at all times, you can uh, find our contact information at alumni.umd.edu and we'll help you get uh, connected and all set up for using the platform. Um, well, with that, since we only have uh, already no time, no time left, I would like to thank you very much um, our speakers, Ali and Matthew and Derek. Thank you for your expertise, for your time. And we will be um, sending the link to this recording and other recordings that we've made of the virtual events of uh, this career week uh, to your personal emails to all participants. So be on lookout for your very own um, collection of uh, videos from this career week 2024. And um, just one other thing before we go, um, we need to uh, thank you, um, sponsors of the Career Week, Terps Card and American Pacific Mortgage Company. And uh, we'll uh, be hoping to see you all at next alumni events. Thank you all very much for joining us today. Thank you. Have a good one.